How's it going everybody, Ben from Basted Mew here and welcome back to the channel. In this video I have another mail day for you. This package is already open, more on that later. First off, let's open this envelope right here and see what we can find inside. So for the most part, these are also gonna be Chinese Pokemon cards. You know, as I said, I've been in love with these Chinese Pokemon cards because, I can't say it enough, they have the exact same quality as Japanese cards while being so much more affordable. Here we have our first, our first Chinese here. We also appear to have some, some more um, extra packs. I didn't order these. I guess the seller just included these as an extra. Let me just get the card out and then we'll, we'll look at the booster packs. Um, this is the Sinia. This one is from Dragon's Majesty, I do believe in English. And I've been wanting to get this card in a PSA 10. Figured I'd grab the Chinese version, because the Chinese version is, I think, in a PSA 10, a little bit cheaper than a PSA 10 English version. For this one, actually, let me pull up the prices for all of these cards. Alright, so for this one I paid $100, and I think that's a really good price, especially with that texture. I've said it so many times, the Chinese cards have the exact same texturing and quality as the Japanese cards do. For a fraction of the cost, that is. So here's our first card. The first of many Chinese Pokemon cards in this one. Let me put the Zinnia over here. And now let's see what we can find in these booster picks. Not only my breath for any of these. These do have the um, Chinese Pokemon TCG Gym Stamp. So that's pretty nice. These are also considered promos, as you can see down here. It's the camera in focus, there you go. Um, maybe we can get a holographic in these, although I'm not too sure. Here we have another non-holographic, this time around an item card. And see what we can find in this one right here. It would open. It doesn't want to open, that means there's something good inside. Nope, that's just a Mr. Rhyme. There you go. I mean, they didn't have to add these anyway, so anything extra in the package is just a really nice nice thought. Alright, let's open this one up next, and this one is actually kind of special. You know how I, if you follow me on Twitter, which I highly suggest you do, um, I recently posted a picture of the, um, whatchamacallit, a cool looking Mew card as you're gonna see here. Um, this exact one right here. Unfortunately, the picture of the card I posted a little while ago, that one, I didn't even notice it at the time, had like really, really, um, whatchamacallit, indentations on the back of the card. And I ended up returning the card and just buying this one instead. This one was a little bit more expensive, and it's only a CGC 7.5, but I, I'll crack it out of the case because this is just for my binder. This is the Legendary Treasures Mew, and looks really, really nice. Really, really cool card. Um, for this one, I paid around $80, um, which I think is a decent price, because for some reason, at least on card market, you can't really find this card in a good enough condition, and all the cards I've seen either had no photo or the, the sellers weren't replying to me, so I had no no option to actually see the card. Let me actually get these out of here and put the mule right there. Well, there we go. Finally have this one in my collection. I do believe I'm only missing one Mew for my binder now, which coincidentally is also in this package. So, as you can see, this package is already open. It's it's time for a little bit of a story right here, so bear with me. This is another package from Card Hobby, that Chinese eBay site that I've ordered a few cards, I think three months ago, no, actually even longer, four or five months ago now. And I didn't actually notice it at the time, I noticed it after editing the first video. But unfortunately, one card was missing from it. Alright, I got it out of the packaging. Wow, that was really difficult. Let me actually do it like this, put the greater cards up here and then the loose cards right there. So, ordered this from Card Hobby again. The first order, like four or five, five months ago, actually ordered ten cards in total. And... I, I didn't actually notice it when unboxing, I only noticed it after, like, editing. There was one card missing. And the the worst part about this is I messaged them multiple times. I think we had a conversation um, in total for, like, two months. Um, this mule right here is actually really cool. For this one, I paid an astonishing $37. 
I think this one goes for easily like 80 to 100 dollars. So that is really, really cheap. And I love this Mew. I actually, I have considered or I have planned for when I hit a thousand subscribers that this will be the 1000 subscriber giveaway. Because I do want to give away a Mew, but I also want to give away a Mew that's kind of special. And I think this one is perfect for, for that purpose. I'm gonna just put that back into its sleeve for now. So you'll go right there. So I was having a conversation with them for like for like uh, two months, saying the car didn't arrive, could you refund me? In the end, nothing came of it. They didn't refund me. Uh, they didn't even reply to my messages anymore. And so I said, okay, well, um, that's it. I'm not gonna get the car back, I'm not gonna get my money back. The problem is, because I'm that much of a cheapskate, you know, you wouldn't have guessed by, by the huge amounts of cards that I usually buy. I'm actually a cheapskate. And the platform offers cards, like, for really, really cheap, as this Umbreon EX right here. This is, as you can see right down here, if, if the camera, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, it's really small and really hard to see. This is a first edition Mu EX from all the way back in 2003, I do believe, or no, 2005, okay. For this one, I paid $80, and that's an incredible price. I think I checked the price, it's been a while. But I think the cheapest one I could find was easily like $150 to $200. And as you can see from the back right here, it isn't in a perfect condition, like there's a little bit of whitening there. But this is for my binder anyway, so I don't, I don't really mind that it's not in a perfect condition. This is for my binder. The front looks incredibly clean. Would you look at how clean the front looks? Like that's insane. And it is an old school EX card. And kind of have to break up my story here. This is really special to me because I used to own this card in German back in the day. I think the German version is like beyond $500 or euros right now. So the German version is really expensive. Um, this one is more affordably Japanese one. It is a first edition, but I still only paid $80 for it. So that is a really good price in my opinion. So, now to continue on with my story, I didn't end up getting a refund or anything, but I chose to continue using the platform because I'm a massive cheapskate, even though that's not very apparent. And now this order has come back, and just in case there was a card missing again, I decided to, to open the parcel just on camera without me commenting it, just so if there are, if there is another card missing, there would be video proof of me and then I could, you know, get the money back for sure, either through them or through PayPal or my credit card company. Um, this Brock right here, I didn't actually want to purchase this. I had issues with the bidding system on Card Hobby and I was trying to figure out if like my account has been shadow banned or something because I've, I don't know, I've like kind of accused them of stealing the card, like not, not directly. I've just said the card is missing, do you know where it is? And then I, I kept bothering them. Um, this one I paid $7 for, but I didn't actually want this card. I just wanted to test out um, if the bidding system was working. Because as you can see right here, I do have a pristine Japanese version already. So I don't know where what I'll do with this one. I guess I'll stick it in my in my trade binder and see if, if anyone wants to trade with it when I do go to, to convention. So that's why I ripped the parcel open, you know, made a video to see if the card was, or if a card was missing. And I was really surprised that the card, let me actually find the card, hang on. Okay, it's, it's the one right here, I just sorted them. So I was really surprised when I unboxed this order and I noticed that this card was inside. So this is the card that they missed from my original package. This one I paid around $80 for, I do believe. And as you can see right here from the date as well, 26th of March. So they just had it lying around. I guess they forgot to add it to my package. But then again, they never refunded me. And even when I now ordered these new cards, they didn't even let me know that, oh, by the way, we found this card for you. It's gonna be in your new package. It's been a roller coaster, but I'm glad that I do have it now, and that means that I can kind of recommend the platform. I'm gonna do a video on the platform anyways. It's a really cool tag team card, Misty and Lorelei, of course. Really, really cool looking. Let me put you over there. 
I guess I have the raw cards right here. I guess the only advice I would give you if you want to order cards from that platform, pay with, um, with credit card. Because then if they like don't refund you, if like a card is missing from your order or anything happens, because they sure as hell won't do it on their own terms, pay with credit card and just charge back whenever something goes wrong. That's the that's the advice that I would give you, and that's how, how I paid most of these cards. Here's another really cool one. Here we have the Umbreon Gold Star in a PSA 10, this time around in a um, in Japanese. Let me find the English one, actually. Okay, so here we are. So I now have the Japanese and the English version of, of this card. Of course, it is the 25th anniversary reprint, but just seeing how rare the standard card is, it's still really cool to have this one. Let me know which foil you like better or which version. Do you like the Japanese one better or do you like the English one better? I think I'm... I'm like moving towards the Japanese one just because I love that silver border and I also like this stamp way more than the than the Pokemon stamp. Let me show that to you up close. Really, really cool. So for this Umbreon in particular, I paid, let me just check, I paid $93. Which I uh, I checked after after actually ordering it, I think that's a bit much. I think these usually go for around eighty to ninety dollars, at least they used to. Maybe the new price is a bit higher, but I think I didn't get a good deal on this one in particular. Still a really cool card, and I'm still really glad to add this to my collection. I've bought I have like two Umbreon cards right here. It makes me look like an Umbreon collector. Umbreon is really cool, but the best one is of course Glaceon, as we all know. Let's move it on. Wow, I actually... I was sorting through them, didn't expect this card to be up this early. It's the Sightseer, the Chinese Sightseer, mind you. Chinese Sightseer for... or in a PSA 10. Wow, I, I didn't really think this through. So this should have been the last card, eh? Look at this one. This is one of these, um, whatchamacallit, high-tier trainers that are, like, really expensive in Japanese that I still need it for my collection because I have a wall of of um, full art trainers, graded full art trainers up on my wall. I do want to make one if I do get more um, graded Pokemon cards, like of actual Pokemon. I do want to make one like right next to it. So this is the one I, I also needed. And this is really, really cool. This one was the most expensive card um, by far in this order. So this one cost me 335 US dollars. Which might sound much, well it is much, but I actually checked um, recent sales on Card Hobby for this card, and most of them actually went for like $500 upwards, so I actually got a really good deal on this card. This is actually, and the background as well, look at the bubbles in the background, that looks really, really cool. Nice, really happy to add this one. I recently saw a sale on the Japanese version of this card in a PSA 10, I do believe, for $1,200. So I got it for like a quarter of the price. I could have bought like three or maybe four of this card and I, or for the price of one Japanese one. That's just ridiculous. People keep, please keep, oh hang on, that's glaring. P please keep sleeping on these Chinese cards because that means I can get them for a really good price. Please keep sleeping on them. Let me actually do this one next because this one is the last new card I needed for my binder, which let me just show you. Once again, I didn't buy this for the grade, I bought it for the card itself, because the card is actually really special. First up, the price. The price was incredible. I paid $53 for this card. Once again, I will correct this other case. I mean, for all I know, this is a Chinese grading company. They might be reliable, but I don't know them. Either way, it could have also been a PSA 8 or CGC 8. Would have still cracked it out of the case, because I want to use this for my binder. Um, as you can see, it is an 8, of course, because the card isn't isn't that clean. You can see some edge wear down here. That's completely fine. The front is really cool. And this is actually incredibly special because this is a, a black and white era card. And from my personal experience, finding Japanese black and white era cards is really difficult for some reason. Like you have, I have no idea why. Like I struggle to find certain black and white era cards 
And this one is also like really special, just like the Umbreon from earlier. This is also a first edition. Not only that, it is a first edition black and white era Mu EX. And the texture, man, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm really happy with this one. This is the last Mew I needed for my collection. Wow, this this is gonna look great in my binder. I'm in love with this one. I'm in love with this one. Let me see. Okay, so I know what both of these cards are. I just don't know which one comes next. Let me save this one for last, because I'm really happy about this one. So this one right here is a card that I actually already own in a CGC 10. It's the lily from, as you can see right up here, from the lily gift box. Chinese lily. So I actually own this in a CGC 10 already. But I hate how out of place it looks up on my wall in that huge, um, whatchamacallit, that huge display case that I have for these full art trainers. I hate how out of place it looked. So I picked this one up and I do intend to sell that, that CGC 10 later down the line. Um, for this one though, I'm just gonna let, let's play a game. Try to guess how much I play I paid for this one right here. Just have a guess. No, you are all wrong. That is way too much money. I paid eighty dollars for this one. Honestly, when I won the auction, I was really surprised that I actually did win it for eighty dollars. Because usually, at least on card market, this card goes easily in a PSA ten for around a hundred to hundred twenty dollars. So another great deal on this card. This is of course not nearly as rare as the Sightseer, but it is still a really cool card. Oh, right, I forgot to do one thing. One thing that I forgot to do with these ones, since, you know, these come from China and it's really hard to fake these cases. I mean, I can see all the security measures on first glance. And one thing to make really sure that they're actually legit is to grab yourself a black light and just shine it up top right here. And as you can see, you can see the PSA lettering. Um, they are able to fake this one, but when they fake it, it doesn't look as white as it does right here, because you can see the PSA writing is like white and very, very easily readable. If they fake this one, it would usually look a bit greenish, yellowish, kind of like these old glow-in-the-dark stars if you ever had had those. So as a comparison, this is the one I bought a while ago. I could also choose one that I graded myself with PSA. So I've worked to shine, hang on, but worked to shine a light on this. You can see it's the exact same. The PSA is white throughout. So let me just do the test real quick for all of these. Yup, that looks good as well. The most important one, this one, as you can see right there, it is white. So that's a really good sign. Let's test it with this one. It's also white. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these sellers have really, really high reviews and really good reviews. So I'm not that concerned, but you know, a safety measure is nice for these CGC slips, even though I bought this off of eBay US. Um, I think there used to be a, a watermark somewhere. It might be visible like this. I'll, I'll try to point it out like when I'm editing the video, but it's right at the bottom corner right there. There is these the CGC scales and that's usually a sign um, to see if the CGC slap is real, at least on these older ones. On the newer CGC slaps, it's a lot easier to see, but there you go. So all of these cards so far are 100% real, which is really, really good. This is the last card in our mail day, and this is also incredibly special because this is a full art of my favorite Pokemon champion in the whole series. It is the Cynthia. And look at that one. At first, I really wasn't sure about this full art. You know, I do still prefer the one from Hidden Fates, where she's like standing there with um, Garchomp in the background and then Lucario off to the side. That one looks really, really cool. But this one is a close second. I mean, it looks better than the one that I want to say recently released, but that's also a little while ago. So for this card in particular, I paid 63 US dollars. What a cheap price and look at the texture, man. Okay. Yeah, I haven't actually turned this card into the light. Sorry about the glare there. But that's just the best way to show off the texture, especially right in the corner right here. Yeah, that looks really nice. I do believe the Japanese version of this card might be a tournament price card 
I'm not too sure. I'll, I'll point it out like up here somewhere if I'm right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Japanese version of this card is actually incredibly expensive. Um, but here we are, so a lot of full art trainers, but also some Pokemon right here. We don't count the English, the English Umbreon. I'm actually, out of all of these cards, these two are really cool, the Sightseer and the Cynthia. And I'm also really happy about this Umbreon EX. You know, I've wanted to to um, get more cards for my EX collection. And this is an incredible first step. I mean, I do have a bunch of them already. I still need to fill about two pages in my binder. Then I'm happy, but this is a great first step. All right, there we go. We got them all in frame. So as I said in the middle of the video, I am gonna do a video on the card hobby platform, how to buy and everything. It's gonna be way easier than my last tutorial on how to buy Chinese Pokemon products. It's gonna be way shorter as well. Um, just as I said, I do recommend if you pay something, pay with your credit card because if something goes wrong, you can charge back the money because their customer support isn't the greatest. Although I do have to point out, I don't know if that's true, that is what I've heard. Apparently the whole page and all of their services is only ran by a very, very small team of like three to five individuals. So that would kind of make sense that they really don't have time to, to comply with any support request. Um, take that at face value, take it for what it is. I'm really glad that not only this purchase has worked out, I also got the card that I was missing. Even though I bought all of these cards um, to replace this one as well as a few other ones. So I currently don't actually know where to put this card in in my display case, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure something out. Well, but anyways, I guess it does it for this video. If you enjoyed this one, then please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here's a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here's the subscribe button. Click this one first and click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And I hope we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace. Take care.